What's happening everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics and today we got another Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers reaction. This time to their album Mojo. Brought to you by a friend, longtime supporter and patron of the channel, Trucker Kev. Thank you Trucker Kev. I always appreciate you, all that you bring and all that all of the patrons bring. If you'd like to support us in any way, check out the Patreon link below or the patron link on the end screen. Let's jump into this album a little bit. I'll be honest with you, before Kev brought this, I didn't even know this album existed. I always like to get the patron's thoughts. Kev knows a ton about music. He said, this album was basically built around from Mike Campbell. He had recently acquired at the time a vintage Les Paul gold top, which is heard predominantly throughout the whole album. It's a very, very solid album. Still start to finish, it's just a great rocker. And I think for me, it rates up even in Tom Petty's discography through all the years till the band came to an end with this sad death. It is in my top three easily. This is an album I bought when it first came out and 12 years later, I probably still listen to it at least once or twice a month, if not more. I never tired of it. Not only just the musicianship, but the songwriting is just top notch on this one. Really interesting about this, of course, was the addition of utility player Scott Thurston, who just a few years prior played with Jackson Brown. He added so much to the band in the later years with his ability to play so many different instruments. I found it was their 12th studio album, if you include Petty in there, uh, released on June 15, 2010. It's Petty's first album with the Heartbreakers in eight years, debuted at number two in the U.S., also the band's first album with bassist Ron Blair since 1981's Hard Promises, as he played on only two tracks on the previous Heartbreakers album, The Last DJ. In November of 2009, Petty told Rolling Stone's David Fricke that it was his intention to record the album live in the studio without overdubs. He said of the album's tone, Quote, it's blues based. Some of the tunes are longer, more jammy kind of music. A couple of tracks really sound like the Allman Brothers. Not the songs, but the atmosphere of the band. This is kind of what um, Kev was talking about here. Petty's longtime guitarist, Mike Campbell, told Jam Music that the sound of his recently acquired Sunburst 59 Les Paul, I got a new guitar, which is actually an old guitar, he said. It's a classic Jimmy Page, Peter Green, Eric Clapton era guitar. There are only five or 600 of them made that year. There's just something about the harmonic overtones in which I picked it up and plugged it in. It immediately had that classic British blues sound. There's 15 songs on this album. The last three of the songs were clean, non-overdub songs filmed in Petty's new studio as he's expressed in his roughly 12-minute Mojo documentary. He noted he had the studio for eight or nine years, which dates back approximately to before the recording of his previous studio album with the Heartbreakers, The Last DJ. All tracks are written by Petty unless I mention that they are not. Metacritic 72 out of 100. The critics were all over the place on this. Several people did not like this album, but you did have a few that did. Like I said, there's 15 songs. Before we dive in, the music will not be in this video, but it'll be on the Vimeo link below. So follow along with me. There's really nothing on these songs, guys. I researched this stuff out. There's really nothing on any of these songs. Let's see, I got something on one song out of 15. So there's just not a lot out here on this album. Like I said, I didn't even know it existed, so thanks to Cap for bringing it to us. As you see below, we'll open this thing up with Jefferson Jericho Blues. Jefferson Jericho Blues. What an interesting guitar tone and repeating riff through in there. I mean, this was just a jam. Great instrumentation. Lyrics on this one, not a lot to it. I mean, he starts out, well, poor Tom Jefferson. He loved the little maid out back. Midnight creeping out to the servant shack. Kept a secret under the bed, wrapped in a burlap sack. He's talking about Thomas Jefferson because... The word is, even though he had slaves, that he fathered six children with one of his slaves. Who knows? And so he just, and then he goes on, well, I drove all night and day and night out to Jericho. But in my mind, I knew it was time to go. And so it's not like I said, a lot to the lyrics in this one, but I mean, the instrumentation on it, you had Scott Thurston on that rhythm guitar, along with Petty on the rhythm guitar. Of course, Mike Campbell's lead guitar. Bass, you had Ron Blair. And of course, Ben Montanich on the piano and organ, drums and percussion, Steve Ferrone, just so I get all the heartbreakers out there. They were the uh, the highlights and the all-stars on this one. Good way to start this album. Now we're going to have a couple longer tracks. This one's almost seven minutes long. we got First Flash of Freedom. First Flash of Freedom. Just a jam, right? The guitars on this were next level. Ben Mont got to shine some as well on the piano, but I can already see why Kev likes this album so much. He he likes the jams. He's a guitar player. Uh, I can I can see why this one definitely resonates with him. That the instrumentation, musicianship, and arrangement on this were top notch. The usual suspects that I mentioned before, Mike and Scott and Tom on the guitar, uh, were just fantastic, especially Mike. But all of them were and. You know, I don't really know what this song's about exactly. Um, you know, it's about a little bit of love here. In our first flash of freedom, I called out your name. Love, it is hard like an overdue train. We felt so much 
more than our hearts could explain. And then the, the way they sing the, the title on our first flash of freedom and a fistful of glory, a suitcase of sin, the language you dream in when you can count to 10. You go to the edge and you always give in on your first flash of freedom. We give in to our desires, right? And they go down every canyon and that we fall. They go across ancient bridges. So um, just a really good song, man. Like you can already tell the musicianship on this is, is what is really going to be emphasized now. What I'm assuming is another long jam because it clocks in at about six minutes. Running Man's Bible. Running Man's Bible. I'll tell you what the brilliance of this song was. On almost every song, the instruments are obviously pivotal, right? Because they keep the beat, they help the melody, they do all this stuff. But on this song, they actually became part of the song and telling the story, right? Because when he gets to the chorus, Mike comes in with a guitar on different parts after he delivers a line. There's just the way the instrumentation plays off of the lyrics and what's going on in the story of the song. You just don't see that very often. So, um, you know, these are obviously musicians who were seasoned musicians, been together forever and experts. Uh, ben Mott was also good on this. I got to point out, I mean, Campbell's guitar work is obviously next level, but so is Ben Mott on the keys, man. He's subtle. He doesn't even have to run and show off, but he's just so, so good. So this man that, that Tom's writing about here has been through some stuff in his life, right? He's giving you the running man's Bible. He's been in some, in some situations. I like it. You're with me tonight on this dark highway. We've run it together so many times. We've run it for money. We've run it for music. We've run it to pay for our innocent crimes. I took on my father and I'm still walking. You know, the old adage, don't take on your dad because he'll probably take you out. Took on all comers in some shape or form. And I see with the eyes of something wounded, something still standing after the storm. Here's one to glory and survival. And there's a little pause in there, right? Little instrumentation run and staying alive. And then Mike comes in with a guitar. It's the running man's Bible when he comes in with the guitar again. Uh, I've been next in line. I've been next to nothing. The next to bystanders who should have said something. It was not in my vision. It was not in my mind to return from a mission a man left behind. We hit the chorus again. And, you know, he, he it's just a really well-written song. The other, the first two songs were fine. It really wasn't about the writing. I forgot to mention the last song was co-written with Campbell. There's two on here that was the last song. And then uh, the very last song on the album. But I really did enjoy that one. Now we go on to the trip to Pirate's Cove. The trip to Pirate's Cove. You know, they're on a road trip and they're really up to no good, it seems like. He's with his buddy and he just kind of he paints the story as Petty so well at doing, right? You can picture all they're in the Defender, the gas got low, we're flying close to heaven, everything was starting to glow. Driving into sunset, rolling because we had to roll and then talking about this stuff. He said, I'll get you five to 10, but boy, you got to stay in the game. You got to let it ride or you only got yourself to blame. They lost a wheel in Santa Cruz. So I imagine the wheel man for their job. So we partied with some motel maids. My friend said, I don't like mine. So what do you say we trade? She was part of my heart. Now she's a line in my face. Um, they let us go without, with a warning. So I guess the cops said, we book you, but we don't have a case. My friend said to take her with her to leave her here would be a crime, but I got to get out of Santa Cruz. And all I got is a Canadian dime. It's just a play on words. She was kind of cute. If a little past her prime, Hey man, we all know how that's kind of, some of us know how it is to be kind of past our prime, but that was really a, understated instrumentation, except still brilliant, right? The guitar work and the piano work by Ben Mott again. So that was a good one. Up to the fifth track, we got Candy. Candy. I didn't really feel that song, but there's 15 songs on here. I mean, I get it. It's a little jam. It's not it's supposed to be anything other than that. But, you know, he just kind of gives, the, the verses just give a, a compare and contrast, right? I show like Candy. I don't go for them turn up greens. I'm with you there, Tom. So when you put it on the table, oh, mama, think about me. He doesn't drink Coca-Cola, but he likes that moonshine with his little baby by his side that drink it from a fruit jar. He doesn't like walking, but he likes the El Dorado ride. I'm also with you there, Tom. And we, yeah, we run it around the cornfield. Yeah, with my little baby by my side. Just a little jam in there. Don't have much to say about it. Let's move on to the sixth track. No reason to cry. Okay, I really enjoyed that one. It just, it's different on this album, right? It, it kind of stands out just because it is different. It's, it's more, I don't want to say it's a love ballad. No reason to cry. So. He talks about, I'm wanting to see you again and I want to hold you once again and see the sun color your hair, see the tall grass blow in the wind, overcome me, bitter sweetness, put me under a magic swell, spell, overcome me, all my sadness, lead me on and wish me well, there's no reason to cry, it's all right. So, I mean, we want to think naturally, you know, that she just left him, but I don't know, man, maybe she passed away, maybe she died, I don't know, but 
Once again, the instrumentation, the guitar work on here was really good because it's more a melancholy song, obviously, so we don't have to jam it out, man. But these guys can do that too. So like I said, kind of a standout, not the best song I've heard, but just a standout because it is different from what we've heard so far. Now we're on to I Should Have Known It. I Should Have Known It. People speculate it's about Petty having a bad relationship, which, I mean, I don't think there's any genius to speculate in that, right? Because, I mean, that's what this song is about. This is classic Petty and the Heartbreakers, meaning this could have been on a 70s album, man. The guitar turn on this mic is in his bag on this one. I don't mention Steve Ferrone a lot, man. He does his job, man, on the drums. He's really good. It's just that, you know, he's not showcased, but that's the way it is with a lot of drummers. They're really good. They, just, they do their job, man. That's it. And so I just want to throw out a shout out to him there. But, you know, the writing on this is great. I should have known it. I should have seen. Leave it to you to treat me mean. Every promise was just to run around. I should have known it. Yeah, you're going to let me down in the chorus. Well, it's over now. You see, that's the last time you're going to hurt me. Most of us, we've lived long enough. We've been with uh, someone who was like this. I should have known it. It's hard to believe it was all right there in front of me. Yeah, when you get out of it, you see it, right? But you ain't seeing it at the time. Sold down the river, left for dead. Yeah, you're putting ideas in another man's head. She's moved on. And this poor other sucker, man, he's uh, he's going to be in it too. So really good song, man. Enjoyed that one. You see a blow up to US 41. US 41, an interesting song, right? It hits you right away. Tom is a uh, singing in this different kind of voice. It's almost like they're trying to recreate a 1930s song when you listen to songs like that with the ambiance and because that's kind of what it's about, right? It's about this highway, US 41, that everything is, uh, is, is revolves around, right? Well, shout out to Highway 61. That's not only appeared in Dylan stuff, but Robert Johnson and other stuff. So US 41 talks about his daddy came on marching over the hill at dawn, had to make that wage, man. That's how we got along. My daddy's life was working working all day long, put food on the table, and the children sang a song. So they didn't really know his dad. His dad had to go out and provide. So his dad's dad did the same thing. My granddad's name was Parkwood, wore a coat of green, took a wife in 31, drove the big machine. My daddy wove the lumber. So Trucker Kev can identify to this. So the grandpa's driving the truck and the daddy's loading it up. Put on the truck, used to see him walking home alone on US 41. That's right, US 41. And then we get to Tom. All my life's been working out the door and gone. Got to make overtime. Keep us moving on. Need a drink of water to get out of the sun. Burning up to make that wage on US 41. Talking about the boss man. Keeps it going strong. That owns the business. Works like nothing's wrong. We got to keep on moving until the bell gone on. And that lady sing. Whoa now. What that lady sing. His given name was Lucky. His wife's name, Annie Brown. Run outside the wall and they chased him right on down. Lucky faced the lawman. The captain drew his gun. They cut him with a sling blade on US-41. That's right, US-41. So an epic little story here, kind of cleverly written around this highway that takes you through this life path of this guy. Now we're up to Taking My Time. Taking My Time, definitely the most blues-infused. I mentioned at the start, it continued to play out that way. We let Mike get in his bag and get in his, uh, his bluesy rhythm there. Taking my time, I'm slowing down a little bit. Taking my time, slowing down a little bit. Yeah, when I was a young boy, honey, my fuse was lit, um, but he's slowing down now. Don't we all know that? Losing my way to something stronger than me scares me to think about what's on the road after me. So there's not a lot of lyrics to this. You know, they're, they're classic four line verses and just two lines repeating on each one of them. So there's not a lot of lyrics. It's more about the jam and just, yeah, I mean, Mike Campbell the star of this one, nice bluesy jam. So we go from taking my time to let yourself go. Let yourself go, just a nice little showcase once again of the guitar work, uh, fantastic guitar work on this one from Mike Campbell. Just a funky little uh, thing in there, kind of rain on the river, I'm soaking wet, waiting on a friend who ain't come yet, he might not get here for three or four days. Gotta make a little bit, go a long way. I, I mentioned earlier, Petty's so good at writing and putting you into this atmosphere. Maybe it's my age and I can think of these times, you know, I'm thinking of the 70s, early 80s, I'm picturing this guy kind of in a nowhere town, you know, and, and kind of down on his luck because he's got this girl that drops by, plays her records through the night, gives him a little love, and she's got to go home. And the, the course, when times are hard, when you start feeling, well, let yourself go. When the river's rising, the world feels cold, let yourself go. I think not, don't be so hard on yourself. He's got that 442. It's sitting in the sun over there, right? It's broke down. It's been 10 years since she used to run, but man, she was a beauty in 69, but there ain't more, no more coming down the line. Those times are gone, right? Not just for the car, but probably for himself. And he gets in that course again. So I thought the writing was low-key really good. So enjoy that one. And we got a third of the album left. We're up to Don't Pull Me Over. Okay, Don't Pull Me Over. A little reggae-inspired uh, tune. And I think the arrangement might be that way because 
I guess man might be running a little marijuana, right? He starts out, don't pull me over, Mr. Police Man. What I've got to do won't hurt anyone. What I've got to do won't. Or what I got to do don't hurt anyone. What I've got to do won't hurt anyone. Don't pull me over. I got mouths to feed. They depend on me. Uh, when the moonlight turns to blue, it makes me so afraid. Let me go. Leave me alone until I'm home and safe. Let me pass. Don't pull me over. Let me pass on by. Should be legalized. So uh, just a fun tune that you don't expect on here. A little reggae action. Now we'll go to the 12th track, Lover's Touch. Lover's Touch. Really good song for what it is. It's not going to be among my favorites, but uh, you know, obviously a blues-inspired song. The, the guitar from Campbell is fantastic. The instrumentation and arrangement is great. Tom's singing in a different voice. Like, you can hear Petty in there, but I think if you just played this song for someone and they didn't know it was Petty, I don't know that they would know it was Petty because um, he definitely sounds different just trying to sing it in that blues style. It's a simple blues-laden lyric. Oh, my love, give me chills and fever. Send a signal to my receiver. Hard living, killing me. I need that woman. Set me free. And I want her. I want her so much. Cause she got the lover's touch and just the nice slow delivery that you're gonna get in a blues tune. We got three tunes left. Let's go to High in the Morning. I'm not sure it's about what I think it is, but it could be. We'll find out. High in the Morning wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be about. Just another showcase from Mike Campbell, really just fantastic guitar work on this. Now we'll go to the penultimate track, Something Good Coming. Something Good Coming. Much more chilled back song. Most stream song on this album, barely, but most stream song on this album. And this is more talking about you know, I think he's telling his girl, his wife, whatever, you know, look, I know I've told you these things before, but there really is something good coming, man. We gotta hang here. So I'm watching the water, watching the coast. Suddenly I know what I want the most. And I wanna tell you, still I hold back. I need some time, get my life on track. I know that look on your face, but there's something lucky about this place. Like she's heard this before, right? There's something good coming for you and me. Something good coming, there has to be. And so then he just goes through kind of his memories and. And I'm in for the long run, wherever it goes, riding the river, wherever it goes. And I'm an honest man, works all I know. You take that away, don't know where to go. So, you know, he's just telling her, look, man, believe in me. I believe this one's going to be the one. I thought that was a really good song, man. I enjoyed it. It definitely is different on the overall uh, flow or dare I say, I'm not trying to make a dad joke, mojo of the album. Up to the final track, the other track that I mentioned earlier, co-written by Mike Campbell with Petty. Good enough. Good enough. Ben Montanch getting a little bit of good work in here at the end, but it was all about Mike Campbell. You know, this is one of the two songs he co-wrote, so you got to write in a great guitar uh, work in there. I might be Mike's best guitar work on this entire album. I don't know. I, I think it very well might be, but the song is just about all these flaws in this girl, but Tom's saying it's good enough for him, and it ends in a way that she might not even be with him anymore. She might go marry a rich guy, but that's going to have to be good enough for him. So a uh, nice way to finish off the album to keep with the theme, really, of, of the guitar-driven maestro mike campbell on this album now we're getting to my favorite tracks before we do that kev gave me his favorite tracks he said there's quite a few charging right out of the gate with jefferson jericho blues um first flash of freedom running man's bible of course i even got that on my youtube channel playing that one that's a classic fun one to play i will link that below check it out on kev's channel the trip to pirate's cove i should have known it and high in the morning and the kind of out of left field reggae influence don't pull me over that's exactly right my Honorable Mentions, Running Man's Bible, the way the instruments tell the story in that song are fantastic. I Should Have Known It, High in the Morning, and uh, something, so, something Good Coming. Those are my Honorable Mentions. My faves are going to be Jefferson Jericho Blues, No Reason to Cry, and the reggae-inspired Don't Pull Me Over. Now we're going to get to my overall score on this album. You know, it's 15 tracks, 65 minutes, but you can see why Kev likes it so much. You know, obviously he's a truck driver, and going down the road, you know, I, I can see how this is just a good jam to put on. Passes that time, and I think it's kind of that kind of album. For me, on first listen, I'm going to be at a 7.0. I could see how that would grow over time for sure. Really good offering of an album I didn't even know existed. Rip to Tom, man. Golly, man. Great stuff out there from Petty. I got quite a few Petty things up on the channel, but there's still more to discover. So let me know what you think of this album, your favorite tracks below. So thanks to Kev. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Until next time, I will see you.